girl, she is back. She is back. She is back for another chit chat. If y'all hear anything, first of all, let me explain to you. I am feeling a certain type of way because I have so much. Do you see that? I have so much gray hair coming in. Not a lot, you guys, but I've noticed an extra six or seven strands. And she's always over here in this area, so... It is what it is, girl. If you hear anything, it's my little space heater because I'm cold, y'all. I don't know what's going on with the heat in here, but Mr. Man acts like he doesn't want to do anything. So it's time for another chit chat full of randomness and foolery. <laughs> You already know how it is. We talk about a little bit what's going on in these YouTube streets. We talk about what's on TV and then some random stuff that pops in my head. I do have a couple of things I have jotted down. Y'all, let me see if I can hear myself. Let me play back this real quick to make sure that this heater isn't drowning me out. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, that was a little too loud. So I went ahead and turned it off. Um, so yeah, yeah, I decided to come on and do a little chit chat. Work is really, really slow right now. At my job, it typically gets slow, which I think, depending on what type of, what area you're in, I should say. Um, but for me personally, since I work with uh, adult education and people need to be in the office girl to train your ass uh, people typically take off they take off for the holidays so between mid-november to the first of january there's literally nothing going on both internal and external training so yeah um so yeah her hair has been a little busy lately um look at look at the length i'm getting you guys so how long can i go with this Girl, you know better than that, Seth. It's been two weeks right now. It's been about two weeks of me not washing my hair. Um, and this has been out for a good two days. I don't know what made me think that I could go another three or four days with my hair looking like this. It's not going to happen because what it'll look good on the outside, but in the inside, it'll get matted up. Like right now, if I put my hand through here, it's caught because it's tangled at the root. So we are going to be pre-pooing and let's just get right into it. Let me show you guys what I'm going to be using. So do you remember this? The Sultanicals? Can't believe, let's see if that'll zoom in for y'all. The Sultanicals can't believe it's not butter. Now this is made with coconut milk and Jamaican black castor oil. I started to do a review on this, but I noticed that the type of coconut oil she used for this is the one that is, it kind of um, beads up almost, you know what I'm talking about? So it was sitting on my hair. It wasn't absorbing even when i tried to rub it in i don't know if you could even i could even oh it's it's even worse now that, that it's cold let me see if you can see this so do you see how i can even feel it you guys i can feel it so what i'm going to do is use this as a free poop because i'm going to wash it out right i'm gonna wash it out anyway all right you guys let me go ahead and start sectioning let me hush up sectioning off my hair so what's going on y'all what's what's going on what's the tea Yes, look at her giving him something he can't Look at that girl, I should have um, made use of this hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all, we, when we're done, I'm sorry y'all, when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and read the book of Corinthians because I'm all out of pocket. So, um, sectioning my hair off and I'm, I am going to be lightly misting my hair with water and then, um, what is it? Applying this product. But y'all, real quick, last night, my whole aim last night was to do a hair related video for y'all hairstyle. I could not, I don't know what, what was going on. You, you ever have one of those days where you try to do a hairstyle and you've done this style before and it's just not coming out the way you want it. And it, like a perm rod or a flex rod and you, you just can't get it down. So I was trying to do a wand curl and I just, I could not get the dang on thing to do what I wanted to do. And I've done one curls now. Um, how many times have I done them? Uh, three times. Uh, and I, I filmed it once for you guys. And it was really, really nice. And I had set aside a full hour and a half to curl my hair. I kept doing it the wrong way. You can see this is, this is some of it. So you see that? You see how... Can you see how it's still, that's okay though, because we're going to lightly detangle and just twist her back up. So y'all look, I'm gonna be stopping by Miss Arlette Pender's shop tomorrow and I low key want her to do my hair. But I know she ain't gonna have enough time y'all because it takes her hours to do my hair, but 
I'm thinking maybe, why am I whispering? I'm thinking maybe that I could go ahead and wash my hair, detangle my hair, and blow it out, and then I'm gonna ask her if she could flat twist it. Y'all, let me tell you something. Baby, she shared, and we're gonna get to what we're gonna talk about, but she shared a video, like I believe it was last year, of a flat twist she had done, and I was so, Taken aback at the definition. I literally thought they were crochet braids. That's how beautiful the flat twists were. So I'm gonna see if she can flat twist my hair. <laughs> I know, Patty. She likes doing hair, and she really likes doing my hair. So, all right, y'all. So, um, what's in these YouTube streets? So I talked a little bit in my um vlog my last vlog about what's in these streets and i told y'all i had to unsubscribe to a couple of people just too much drama and you know i'm like miss delightful aka Rhonda. i don't mind a little bit of drama but too much i don't have time for it yeah that's that is what it is so um tv 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 we talked about the real housewives we ain't talking about those helpers anymore we talked about the real housewives but i have been watching married to medicine and you know what Married to Medicine is the new show now. Um, I know a lot of people don't watch reality show, and I'm a type of person who, if I miss a, an episode, oh well, I'll catch it later on. But I feel like, okay, so let's talk about a little bit of it. So the last episode, I was confused as hell because Cecil and um, Dr. Simone went out to eat, and they're talking about things, talking about things. First of all, y'all, Oh, this goes to show you that men men can also have an emotional affair with someone. So on the show Married to Medicine, Cecil, who is the, the husband of one of the doctors, Dr. Simone, he has had an on and off again emotional affair basically with his best friend. First of all, I already have a problem with my husband having a best friend that's a female. If you're gonna be best friends, we all gonna be best friends. If you best friends for, with her, we're gonna be best friends too. So during the reunion show last last year, um, Simone said that this woman spent the night in their house during the holidays when she lived there in Atlanta. Oh, you out of your damn mind? I wish my husband would get his raggedy ass up here and say, I shouldn't say that. I wish my husband would say, hey, um, uh, Rochelle's gonna be up in here and she's gonna sp spend the night uh, can you make sure that you fix her some, some collard greens too? Do what? No other female is going to, sorry, I'm sorry y'all. Isn't that some foolery? His best friend is a woman. And I, I, apparently he was best friends with her before he met his wife. I'm not sure, but it's been a number of years. And the problem with that is that when, this is what I, I've seen happen. Because it happens in relationships before, but a lot of the times it's a woman who does this, who gets emotionally con connected to the um, opposite sex. Not to say that a man can't do it, clearly we see it happening. So whatever problems he's having with his wife, you would typically go to your best friend, right? But your best friend is more, more than likely the same sex. But no, he's going to his best friend. What's, what's her name, Tammy? He's going to Tammy. And even though Tammy looks, I shouldn't say that. When I saw pictures of the woman, I thought she was a, um, I thought she was at the all you can eat seafood boy. <laughs> I thought she was a lesbian. I thought she was a lesbian, y'all. I'm sorry, but she was giving me lesbian fanny pack khaki shorts tees. I'm sorry, but she was. And so it's come to find out that he is having a emotional affair, emotional affair, which is worse than an actual physical affair in my opinion. And he's moved back into the house. Oh, that's another thing. They have separate houses. So he's moved back into the house, the main house or whatever, her house. And they went out to dinner, get to the punker. They went out to dinner and the um, conversation goes back to his affair with this woman, Tammy. All of a sudden, Dr. Simone starts cursing and then just, I'm like, oh my God, woman, in order for you to move, he's gonna get tired of that shit real fast, okay? You can't, if you're going to sit up here and say you're going to accept your spouse when they've cheated, you can't keep bringing back stuff. You can't do that. I mean, because that other person's going to get tired of it. And I was like, she just came out of nowhere. Just, look, 
her feelings are warranted, but there's a way that you can communicate without sounding, sounding all crazy. I mean, she was cursing and just acting the fool and she got up and stormed out of the restaurant and he's sitting there like, he's confused and I was confused too for him. Child, no. So yeah, watching that and um, you know, what, what really tore my heart was hater or lover with Mariah. She really does love her husband and I guess uh, Mariah is another uh, person on the show. Her husband Aiden was sick when they went on this female's trip, all females trip. He come down, he called her and said that he's going into the hospital, the ER, excuse me, he's been admitted. Was it meningitis is what it was, y'all. When you are sick, you have to go to the hospital. And, you know, thank God he's a doctor and he recognize, recognizes when things are getting out of hand. But there are so many people who wait to go to the doctor or they just don't go. Um, and then by the time they do go, it's too late, which is why a lot of the times when we hear people have died of the flu, they go to the hospital and literally they die in the hospital from the flu. Oh my God, this is why, this is why I go to the doctor about everything. Like Miss Jackson, my out of pocket and everything is meant. <laughs> I've, I've been meeting my deductible for the last three years straight, girl. Because I go to the doctor for everything because I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, I want to be sure. You know, I'm very proactive when it comes to my hair, my health. At least I try to be. And my hair too, girl. We're proactive about my hair. So, yeah, y'all, let me get these lights on me, girl, so you can see everything. Okay, that's a little too much. Um, So, yeah, y'all, that's what's been going on. Um, Christmas around the corner. I'm about to order JB his Christmas presents tomorrow. And I told my husband, I'm like, well, it's about $160 for a present. He's like, $160? What are you? I said, that is cheap. Yeah, I'm sorry. That is cheap. That is cheap. Because I know some people who go $300, $400, $500 $400 on their kids. Oh, see, you see that? You see what I'm saying? You see those chunks? They spend some coins. And, you know, JB's little presents are like seven, eight, ten dollars you know. I bought him a telephone, like a real landline phone. Y'all, I have the weirdest child, I know. So anyway, y'all, let's get into some other discussion. Um, oh, another show I've been watching is Dirty John. Girl, when I tell you this show, Bravo, it comes on Bravo. My my best friend, she was um we were talking about it a couple of days ago. She's like, you gotta check out this show. The documentary is even better. I'm like, wait a minute, this is based on a real person. She's like, yeah. So basically, I'm not gonna give a lot in case you guys, any of you are watching it or want to watch it. But it basically is, is around this man named what is his name, John Menahan or Menahan. He has a very unique last name. He has spent his entire life basically scamming women, being married, having a wife, uh, then a, um, a wife with two kids, and then having another woman on the side that he's possibly being engaged, having different um, identifications, aliases, different social security numbers, going to jail, scamming people. Because I got TV One back. I'm still back on my, where are we going to start at, y'all? Fatal Attraction. Y'all, I love me some Fatal Attraction. I will sit up here and I record record them too because I don't have time to watch it when it comes on. And I will sit up here and watch three or four episodes straight in between doing other stuff. But it's just sad what people will kill someone over. Just the smile. And it's like, the, how, are, how are you not thinking? I mean, I understand... To a certain degree, like a crime of passion where you're upset and all of a sudden someone kills. But the fact that people scheme to kill someone over like a $10,000 insurance policy. Or the one I saw not too long ago, the guy got a shotgun rifle, walked up to his girlfriend who worked at a tollway, unloaded on her, then drove to her boyfriend's or husband and killed him too. It's like, what are you thinking? Now, he actually asked for the death penalty. And they're like, no, we ain't gonna give it to you. But it's like, you always try to think, you know, I always think to myself when I watch your shows, like, what can really drive someone to really do that? Like, what are you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about? Why, how and why could you do that to someone? Especially when it comes to stuff like insurance money. There was one where I'm sure y'all would know who I'm talking about. What is her name? She's based out of um, Francis Newton. 
And I remember seeing her her story a couple of um, a couple of years ago, out in the eighties. What was it in Huntsville? What was it? Was it Houston? Was she in Houston, y'all? Y'all don't know. Uh, anyway, she had shot and killed her children and her husband for insurance money. Like, I think it was like a few days before or that week, she took out $50,000 insurance policies on her children and her husband. Come on now, girl, are you serious? And then the, the thing that was, well, the thing that's a red flag in a lot of these cases is when your ass is calling the insurance company asking where your money is at. Because most of the time, most, people don't want that money. It, it, like if someone is, it's not that they don't want it. They're not going to be calling the insurance company asking for their money. They're going to be busy, you know, grieving and planning a funeral for their loved ones. A lot of the times they don't even think about that money till months later after the person has died. So, what the hell? So, they executed her. Oh, yes. Texas does, does not play. Now, of course, they are a little lenient on women like it is anywhere. Um... But yeah, she she got executed for that. But yeah, y'all watching my fatal attraction. Love me some fatal attraction. There was one story out in um Tyler, Texas. And I know people who knew the guy where he killed a forgot his name, but he killed a transsexual. And the T was that he didn't know that it was really a man. Come on. Hey y'all, so real quick, I finished the the book Be Common and Y'all, I don't know if it's because I've been so blindsided or just in this. I feel like some Americans, some of us are in this almost trance due to all of the foolery that has gone on with Trump and this administration. Like every other week, it's a, did he really say that? And so I completely, in reading this book or hearing it because I did the audio book, I completely forgot about all the stuff that had occurred while while Obama was in office. Everything from the Sandy Hook shootings to the Dylan Roof um, to the nightclubs. I forgot about all that that, that man had to you know go through. I for completely forgot about Trump being a birther, and I wonder if his supporters even know that. If it, if they even remember that 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 Trump had this huge agenda, agenda where he would pay someone a million dollars if they could find um, Obama's birth certificate and that he was really a Muslim even though he went to a, a, a did he go to an AME church? And I, I do remember that preacher who was coming out with all those, um, uh, the preacher that they had on camera saying all that, you know, racist stuff. And then they tried to paint Obama of being, you know, this militant, person but yeah he's supposed to be a muslim so i'm really confused um and so in the book michelle was saying how they were very careful with that you know and it's just so amazing to get this almost different perspective now that she's not in the white house and i find i found myself wondering is melania did she do any of any of this you don't really hear about much what she's doing. There's certain things as a as a first lady that you are responsible for, you organize. Like she was basically saying is that you find certain projects or causes to um, either work on or manage. And I don't what what exactly is she doing, y'all? And and you know organizing the Easter egg hunt, organizing all these parties. That's a first wife duty or, or responsibility. Um, it was a very interesting book. And so towards the end, I came, I love the book. And I, clearly I think a lot of people enjoyed the book, but I was left with this, oh my God type of feeling. You know, she, it, it's, she's becoming a college graduate. She's becoming a lawyer, becoming a leader, um, becoming a first wife to the first black president. You know what I mean? But her purpose at what, what Michelle's 54, her purpose as a individual on this planet, you know, she's halfway done with her life. Let's keep it real. But towards the end I got this feeling that she's still becoming she's still evolving so I what I took away at the end of the day is that because you guys know I'm always on this I gotta find my purpose I gotta find my purpose 
what if, and I mentioned this before, what if your purpose is where you're at right now? The season that you're in, whatever type of hurt, whatever type of, whatever you're in right now, you're supposed to be in that. And then you become another year, two year, three year, four year, however long it takes, you go into your next phase. But you never stop becoming, you know what I mean? So, um, again, my takeaway was that, you know, you have this woman who became a first lady, but yet she's still questioning, is she good enough? And you hear that, she repeats that throughout the book in certain chapters. Is she good enough? You know, she doubts herself. Someone who's had all these accomplishments, two degrees from two Ivy League colleges, I'm sorry you guys, she's one of the highest educated first women, first wives we have had. So, highly educated, okay? Um, but yet, she's still doubting herself if, she, if she's good enough and what was she really, what, what should she do now? And so I'm like, at the end of the day, let me just say this, at the end of the day, I'm like, I shouldn't beat myself up. I shouldn't beat myself up because I'm not where I think I should be at in life right now. You know what I mean? I'm okay where I'm at right now. I just shouldn't stop growing. I should continue on. So yes, I enjoyed the book. I love it, but I it was just so amazing to hear all the little stuff like they have to get there. Like if when the kids have a sleepover, if they wanted to go somewhere, they had to get the people they were traveling with social security numbers. Um, Secret Service had to go over and you know do a sweep over the over that person's house. I'm like, wow. A person on Obama had to travel with a personal doctor, bags of his blood type, just in case something happened. I'm like, that's a good ass idea. How can I get bags of my blood type? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it was just so amazing to hear that and just to hear how, um, you know, her, her humble upbringings, you know, um, being raised in South Side of Chicago with her grandparents and, you know, taking piano lessons. And one thing that stuck out to me though, you guys, is that you oftentimes hear, especially from people who, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it because I'm just transparent like that. I feel like a lot of white people are tired of hearing about the racism and the racist uh, comments from black people. They feel like we're whining. Is that slavery was not that long ago. The Jim Crow laws were not that long ago. And Michelle spoke on how the men in her family and um, the obstacles that they had, but yet they still kept working and providing for their families. But some of them couldn't go and get a college degree. They couldn't go, you know, things with the unions, all, all, all because they're black. They were black, you know what I mean? My own grandfather passed away at 101 years old. He knew slaves. My grandfather knew slaves. So no, it was not that long ago. My own grandfather couldn't even write, y'all. It was not that long ago. It really wasn't. So, and then the effects of that we see still going on today. So, yeah, I really do love the book. If you haven't read it, check it out, girl. So, y'all, I, I cannot get through this hair while I'm on this camera with y'all. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get through it. That is it. This is going to be kind of a longer chit chat. I'm going to go ahead and put this down and cover her up somehow. <laughs> I don't need to be scaring anybody. Um, oh, Lord. This, this is a all types of uh so yeah y'all this is it i'm so glad you pick up the phone girl because i've been wanting to talk to you so all right you guys take care bye